So now the next thing that I wanted to do is I want to go over, we'll, we'll let that run in the background. Let that run in the background. And what next thing I want to do is I want to send Bitcoin from Coinbase um, to uh, the Satoshi client. All right. So Coinbase, as some of you know, is a online wallet. And let's take a look real quick at how that is set up infrastructure wise. Okay, here's an example of the connections between the different services. So we know the blockchain is a, distri a distributed record of account of those people who have exchanged rights to Bitcoins. My client, it's blue here because it's running on my machine and it's connecting to the blockchain um, in order to send and receive Bitcoin. Coinbase also connects to the blockchain. In addition to connecting to the blockchain, it, it connects to the ACH, the automated clearinghouse, and that enables uh, Coinbase to send and receive money uh, with banks, US dollars with banks. So we know the blockchain deals in Bitcoin, and we know ACH deals with dollars. So, in, so not only does Coinbase uh, main, keep a wallet for you, does the same functions as what my local client here does, but it'll also enable you to translate from Bitcoin to dollars in case you want to send dollars out into the banking economy, banking economy or get it back from the banking economy. Coinbase charges a fee in order to do that transaction, and that's their business model, from what I understand it. Okay, client is up to seven hours ago. All right, so let's go to Coinbase. All right, here's my account on Coinbase, and looks like I've got a small amount of Bitcoin there, and we're going to see um, if we can send some Bitcoins to my wallet. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to say, okay, well, where are we going to send the bitcoins to. So we need the receiving address uh, to which we want to send the bitcoin. So let's go back to the um, Satoshi client and say, okay, well, let's pick the address that we want to receive them at. Okay. Let's see, we would like to receive them. Okay, so this was something I made up, so I'm going to go remove that. And um, Let's see, I should be able to, we'll call this um, demo of receiving Bitcoin from Coinbase. And we're going to get 0 0.001577 Bitcoin. And we're going to send it to an existing um, address despite the warning there. And let's see, let's, um, let's just use this first key pair that I made. Okay, so here's the address. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to keep it in my clipboard as I go back to Coinbase. All right, how are we doing on a blockchain? Five hours left to go? Okay. Okay, so let's see. Let's send money. Funny how interesting how they use the word money, um, acknowledging that Bitcoin is money. All right, I'm going to paste my Bitcoin address in there. I'm going to specify the amount of Bitcoin that I want to send. Let's see if it's going to let me do this. And let's send it. Okay. So if all goes well, that Bitcoin transaction should have been sent out onto the peer-to-peer -peer network and transmitted to the miners who are now going to try and incorporate it into a block. All right, let's go back to our Satoshi client and see if that actually showed up. All right, in order to see it, we're going to have to we're going to have to catch up to current time, and so this may take a few seconds. Um, so we'll, I'll can, oh, there it is. Wow, great. Okay, so the Bitcoin that I sent uh, has just showed up on the peer-to-peer -peer network, and it has showed up, um, bef it hasn't been incorporated into a block, but the fact that a transaction has been made has been sent out on the peer-to-peer -peer network, and it's now available for miners to incorporate that transaction. Lights on. Lights on. 
And so now it's possible for the miners to incorporate that transaction into a block uh, because it's been broadcast out on the peer-to-peer -peer network. So now that it's been broadcast on the peer-to-peer -peer network, miners are taking that transaction, adding it to their block, and trying to solve the problem of what is the right nonce that has the right number of zeros, what is the right nonce, so that the SHA-256 hash of all of the transactions has the right number of zeros at the beginning. And the miner which does that will get the reward for closing the block, for closing the page of the ledger in which my transaction is present. All right. Now what we're going to see here, uh, we're almost caught up. Go back to our overview. I just want to show the transition here as we go from being out of sync to being in sync. One hour ago, one transaction every 10 minutes. So that's about six more blocks we need to download. And by the way, the first time you run this client, it takes forever to download the whole blockchain. Forever like a week of your computer being online in order to get the whole thing. Okay, we're down to one hour. And we can see here that that transaction in which Coinbase sent money, sent, in which Coinbase posted the rights to Bitcoin on the blockchain, which is like sending me money, has been recognized by my client running on my machine. Oh, and we're up to date. We just received our last block in the blockchain. Um, everything is up to date with respect to the longest chain that's known uh, in Bitcoin. And now if we go back to transactions, um, you can see here that when you hover over it, it says that this transaction has 5,613 confirmations, which means 5,613 blocks have closed after this transaction has been made. Okay, what I want to do now is I'm just going to keep the recording going, but I'm just going to let the I'm just going to let it happen so that we see the um, we, we see the process of confirmations come in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm trying to bring up a bring up a clock here so that you can see it in case I speed up the time of the video. Okay, so what we know we know that one block should get closed every 10 minutes. And so when 20 minutes transpires, we should see two blocks close, um, and hopefully one of them will contain that transaction. So if we come down here and we hover over the check mark, we'll see we're currently at 309.355 is the height of the blockchain. We'll write that down, 309.355. We're waiting for the next block to close, 309.356. Okay, 10 minutes has transpired. Our transaction has not been picked up by a block. If we go to see what our current block is, we're currently at 309355. So no new blocks have been closed since we sent our transaction. So we'll continue to wait. Okay, so that was funny. Um, 10 minutes passed, as you can see. And what we received now is we know that one additional block has been closed. If we look at our length of our blockchain, it's now 309.356, which is one more than 309.355, which we had before. And we now see that the icon up here, it's been replaced with a um, red icon indicating that there have been uh, uh, two confirmations, so out of six. Um, so this means that the blockchain has been extended such that this has been, I guess this has been Oh, look, a new block came in. Okay, great. So a new block has been closed, and so two blocks have been closed. The first one had my transaction in it, and the second one built on top of that previous block. So one page in the book was closed that had my transaction in it, and then another page was closed afterwards. That's considered two confirmations, and once you get up to six confirmations, or six block pages, it's uh, considered very unlikely that a 51% attack would be able to reverse this transaction. So. Um, depending on what I'm exchanging for this 157.00.001577 Bitcoin, at this point I might be comfortable giving the goods back to the person or, or whatever it is. Okay, so now if we go back to Coinbase, which is, so this is all, these are all rights being managed on my local computer. If my computer crashes, I'm in a lot of trouble, or my hard drive crashes, I'm in a lot of trouble because I, I lose all access to this, you know, $1,000, uh, which is located on my machine right now. All right, so 
what I um, what I can do now is I have this money. Let's go back to Coinbase and see what happened after sending that money from Coinbase. So let's refresh the page. We see, okay, well, first of all, my wallet in Coinbase has no Bitcoin in it, which is to be expected because I sent it. And if we come down here, we see that that transaction in which I sent the money from the wallet at, that Coinbase is maintaining or a, or a key that Coinbase is maintaining to a key that my wallet is uh, maintaining, we can see that that transaction is still pending because it hasn't had the full six blockchains uh, to confirm it. We can dig in here and we can say, oh, that's interesting. I sent this many blockchains from my Coinbase account to this address. Uh, here's the message. And if I look at the details, you can dig down into some of the details of the blockchain and see that um, there's been two confirmations on the block so far. This is the block in which my transaction occurred. Here's some information about the size and the, um, the fee that was paid and all this, all this stuff. Now, I didn't pay that fee, so I guess I guess Coinbase is eating that fee for me for, for the time being uh, so that people will use their service. Okay, so the, the next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to send some Bitcoin back to Coinbase um, from my Satoshi client, and I'm going to try and send the same Bitcoin back. And so I'm going to say, not just am I going to give Coinbase some Bitcoin, but I'm going to try and give them the exact same Bitcoin that I received um, back to them. And we'll see if we can do that. And then we'll use these transactions in the future um, for a future exercise. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can do that. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to say, okay, um, we want to receive a payment. Let's see. Where do we go to do that? Let's go back. All right. We want to receive money. And we want to receive money at a Bitcoin address. So we're going to copy that because I don't trust myself to transcribe um, the information. Okay. And now we're going to go to the Satoshi client. And we're going to say, okay, it is now time to send money. And I want to specify which coins these guys are coming from. Here. Okay, so here's the list of all the places from which I have received Bitcoin. You can see lists and lists and lists of the places. And now what I want to do is I want to take the Bitcoin which I received from Coinbase. I want to select that as the Bitcoin. Which dollar bills in my wallet do I want to give to the other person? Out of all the dollar bills which are the same amount, I want to pick specific dollar bills to give to them. All right. Um, and so you can see here that I do this and then my client is... Um, is adding fees automatically for me, which I'm not into, but oh well. All right, so who are we going to pay it to? Well, we're going to pay it to um, this address, which is uh, my Coinbase receiving address. And I want to send, um, let's send whatever we've got after the, well, let's see what we, see what it lets us do here. The fee technically is optional, but the client forces you to um, add a fee in order to keep the ecosystem operating. Let's see, zero, one, five, five, one, two. I guess. Okay. Well, let's just let's just make it easy. Let's just say zero, point one. Five. Okay, and it looks good, and we are going to send it. Um, okay, so for this I have to open up my wallet because I have my wallet. Uh, in order to send money from my wallet, I have a password on it. And then it confirms that I want to send it. It says that this was added as a transaction fee. Here we go. That transaction fee goes to the miner. Sent. Kind of scary when you do that feels a little bit scary because you know you can't get that money back. Okay, everything clears and if we go back to our transactions, we can see now that that transaction has been posted to the infrastructure and now, just like the transaction that was being sent from Coinbase to me, this transaction is now being sent out on the peer-to-peer -peer network. Miners are picking it up and in particular, they're going to pick this one up because there's a fee on it and they're going to try and incorporate it into the blockchain. All right, so let's go back to our timer and let's set a timer for 20 minutes again. All right, let's note what our current 
block is. It's 309-357. All right, and we're going to just, and we're going to hang out here for a little bit until we see that a miner picks up that transaction and sends it back to Coinbase. Okay, if we briefly go back now to Coinbase and we refresh the page, just like our local client has recognized that some money has come in, that there's a transaction posted, we can also see that Coinbase has also seen that transaction posted to the peer-to-peer -peer network. And if we dig into the details of it, we can see that, okay, here's the transaction. It's being sent from me. Um, but you can see that it hasn't been included in a block yet and there's been no confirmations. And so Coinbase, Coinbase is waiting for a miner to close that transaction just like we are. Now, in my local client, I'm able to send money as soon as I have that transaction included in the blockchain. Um, Coinbase is probably going to abide by the six confirmation requirement and won't allow that money to be sent until it sees the money has been completely confirmed. Okay, so let's stand by here and continue to wait for that transaction to close. Actually, while we're, while we're waiting, we can calculate what that transaction fee was. So my client added the transaction fee. You know the transaction fee was 0 0.00 zero zero two five eight of a bitcoin bitcoins are currently six hundred dollars each so if we multiply that times six hundred we see that the fee for doing that transaction was about one point five cents so one point five cents on a dollar uh, transaction it just happened to be that right before the transaction uh, was closed in a block. I ran out of disk space on my recording video and so I had to deal with a bunch of the video. But in any event, what you can see is that when I finally was able to come back to it, um, we have our transaction has been confirmed, we sent our money to Coinbase, and now when we go back to the Coinbase website uh, and we look in my transaction, We look and we see here's the money that was sent from my Satoshi client here and we can see in the details that it has been confirmed 59 times, so 59 blocks have closed since this one has closed. Um, and yeah, and so there it is. Great. So just to summarize, what we did here in this session is we looked at the um, Satoshi Bitcoin client. Uh, we looked around some of the features of it. We sent some Bitcoin from the Coinbase service to our Satoshi client. We watched it arrive relatively quickly. And then we sent the um, Bitcoin from the Satoshi client back to Coinbase. And that took considerably longer uh, to uh, see processed. Um, that was because our infrastructure here looked like this. What we did is we sent uh, coins. Uh, we transferred the rights on the blockchain to the keys that were held on my local computer. The keys of my local computer saw that, or that my local pro, the program running on my local computer saw that the keys that were managed by my local program had rights to bitcoins that had been just put there recently by Coinbase. Once there were enough confirmations, one confirmation, we transferred those rights back to the Coinbase addresses, and Coinbase saw those in the blockchain. That confirmation took a long time in order to see um, see the block get closed, and that's when we ran out of disk space. But then when we came back in the video, we saw that, um, in fact, it had been accepted, the transaction had been accepted, the block that it was in had been closed, and Coinbase uh, had control of the addresses um, that had the rights to that Bitcoin. Okay, thanks very much.